Welcome to the show. I'm Robert Scoble. I work at Rackspace and I go around the world interviewing cool startups and I'm going to demonstrate that right here with Yair. Um, Yair, what's going on? Are you having a good South By? Amazing. Amazing, Amazing. experience. Amazing experience. Never so, been such an advantage. So what's it like for a startup entrepreneur? Because this, is this your first South By or have you been here before? That's my first South By. Uh, haven't been, never, never something like that. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I, I wrote on Facebook yesterday, it's like a kid, a kid in a candy store, it's, it's amazing, it's amazing. So many cool startups and all the media and all the people, yep. absolutely amazing. I bet your life has been lots of little two minute conversations of pitching your app to lots and lots and lots of people, <laughs> collecting business cards and doing deals like Trying that. Trying right? to do it in a minute, Yep. because people don't have time. Yep, so what's your one minute pitch? My one minute pitch? Uh, we have an app called Group Shots. It's, it solves a problem that any, any parent has taking family photos. When you take a photo, uh, it always happens that one of, the, one of the kids is not smiling or not looking at the camera, so you take another photo. And in the second photo, another kid is not looking at the camera, so you end up with three, four, five pictures, and there's no perfect picture. So with our app, you can choose which face you want to take from which picture and create one perfect picture, picture that, is, uh, that looks excellent. It's a great idea and it works really well Yes, and uh, saves us for, for doing that. What's going on in Israel? Because you're, you're from Tel Aviv, right? Right. Yeah. Why are all the cool startups coming out of Tel Aviv or San Francisco? You know? I, I would argue because it's probably in the water and the DNA and it's uh, Tel Aviv, you know, Israel. Well, first of all, who are you? Oh, I'm uh, Jeff Pulver. I'm a friend of both of you guys. Yeah. And, um, and you're an investor in Israel, Israeli companies I'm and an you're investor. always there. I meet you on the street corner in Tel Aviv. This is true. We do run into each other. Yeah. Um, I think it's something re very incredible. It's, it's part of the culture. It's sort of in the DNA of, of, of innovation. I mean, because it, it's not about having billions of dollars of availability. The one thing that Israel doesn't have, supposedly there are lots of natural resources, there's no oil. I'll argue that an oil well is born every day there. Yeah. And it's being able to figure out how to capture that innovation. And it's happening organically. It's funny, in New York, LA, if you see people working in restaurants, typically they're actors or actresses looking for jobs. You go to a cafe, next time you're in Tel Aviv, go into a cafe, the people working there are people actually trying to do a startup. Yeah. But, but it's, it's, it's a different economy and a different mindset. And it's, uh, you know, I, I've been very fortunate the last the past year, I adopted about 30 companies and uh, in all different sectors, all in high tech, but doing different things. And it's been an amazing run to see how they grow and, and to experience candy stores. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, I wanted to have you both on the show to explain what the South By experience is from an investor point of view and from an entrepreneur point of view and then maybe a, a journalist or tech blogger point of view, right? What, so what's it been like? What, what kinds of conversations have you had? What kinds of people have you met? And uh, what are you seeing happen out on the street? Um, it's it, it, it's kind of amazing to see how people are interested in everything we have to say. Uh, we, we just get to someone and say, "You want to see the best app you've ever seen?" And everyone said yes. We see people okay, camera people with big cameras walking in the street. We just come and say hi. They're interested in stories. They came here to cover the latest tech uh, news, and um, it's kind of the best place to get exposure and meet. We met TVs, TV crews from Europe, from America, from Asia, all over, and they're all interested in our story. So it's just a perfect place to get exposure. He, and, he uh, gave away 200,000 downloads over the weekend. Wow. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You this, know, this, this is incredible because people think South by made Twitter, right? Yeah. When when uh, South by was or when Twitter was at South by after a year, they only had 100,000 users. It took them six months to get 15,000 users. And people forget that, right? Because Twitter now has, uh, right. I don't know, 200 million users. I, I don't a, even a know bunch, the number. A, a, lot of, a lot of users. And it took six months to get to 15,000. And how long have you been out on the marketplace? Uh, we just uh, launched our app last month. Last month. And last you, have, month. And and you had 200,000 downloads in the last in weekend? In the last weekend when <laughs> we announced that we're coming to Side by Southwest and we released the app for free for just two days. And those two days were totally unexpected. We didn't think that we'll have so much. Uh... And this is an example of why, how the world is moving faster. And it's evidence here at South by how much bigger it is, right? This, is, this reminds me of Vaughn. It's like I walked the show floor here and said, OK, this is what I, I saw this three years ago starting to happen like that. This has gone, certainly gone commercial. But I still would argue if you're an investor looking to find a great startup, 
either hang out in the hallways where the conferences are taking place or look for the really small booths here. The yeah. people who could barely afford to be here are here on a mission. Yeah. And they're the ones that are just waiting to be discovered. And well, I discovered Highlight at a party in December. Ooh. This is really how you have to launch products at South by now, right? It, yeah. It, everybody's, CNN and Mashable and TechCrunch are calling. I thought that was the same company now. <laughs> CNN, did, did the deal get done? Because I, I, I heard the rumors about that. There's yeah. rumors that CNN's buying Mashable. But anyway, so um, they all named this South by the highlight South by, right? In 2007, it was the Twitter South by. In 2009, it was the Foursquare South by. Last year was the group texting South by, the, right? The question really is how much of this is sticky in terms of what's going to be, uh, how much, it may be big right now, but in six weeks or six months, how transformational is this really? And what does this do? It's nice to be, joining Delight's a wonderful thing, but how much of it's gonna change your habits? Because you know, you're kind of set in your ways. You like to look at great technologies, but you let go as soon as you can if it doesn't exactly map the way you, you like to think. So yeah. I'm not quite sure that, that we know yet what, if this might be the highlight, yes, so great for that. Oh, it's definitely in the highlight, because I've met 500 people on highlight. That's off the charts for people, a new people, app. People you didn't know? Didn't know. You didn't know 500 people here? I can't believe didn't that. Didn't know. There's wow. a lot of people here. There's 45,000 people at South By this year. I remember when I first started coming to South By Interactive, there was 600 people. There's a huge shift in the 5, industry. 45,000 people 45,000 here. It's crazy. This is, is why hotel rooms are $2,000 a night now. It, it's turned into the, one of the biggest trade, sh trade shows and conventions and most important events to launch things. Aetna just had a big party on Saturday night. Tell me about the parties you've been to because I know I know you run parties, and do, you I, know which parties to go to. Uh, right? On Friday night, um, it, I was very thankful it was raining. I, uh, leading up to South by, I ended up giving away 4,000 tickets to my party. And I was very happy it was raining on Friday night, because the, the venue I had turned out only going to 300 people. So um, uh, we worked out OK. In terms of the parties, I'm looking for people. I'm actually not looking for big parties this year. I'm looking for the niche parties, which are really groups of people getting together spontaneously and having conversations, because I'm a fan um, there's certainly a time and a place to have loud music and dark lights, but if you actually here to meet 500 new people, which you did just yesterday, I'm a fan of events where the lights are up and the music is low. You can actually incredibly see the people and hear them. I know it's retro, yeah. but that kind of works. So I'm really more of someone who will spontaneously be walking down one of the streets and find a group of people, catch on to them, and spend two or three hours talking to them. That's how I've, that's how I've been doing my so-called parties the last couple of nights. Yeah. We should explain what Highlight is, and there's, a, there's seven companies in this genre, which is uh, mobile people discovery. So it shows you people near your phone, right? Right. It highlight shows you 100 yards away people that are, that, that are, that are uh, close to you, and I'll just show it to you here. But other than the walking around Palo Alto or, or South by Southwest, how often do you think you can use this for yourself? Uh, it, I, LA, five people. Paul Walter, all sorts of people. San Francisco, it's like South by, right? Right, okay. South, South by is uh, like San Francisco in Texas, right? Um, but it shows you who is nearby right now. It shows you what we have in common. So which Facebook friends do we have in common? Like you're on Highlight and you have a lot of friends in common with me. And uh, which Facebook likes we have in common. So I, I, hey Jeff, I noticed you're into Skrillex or something like that, right? <laughs> right. And it's like we can uh, have something to talk about when we do meet up. And a little picture, and it shows a map also. And it's a historical feed. Sounds simple, but Twitter sounded simple, right? When when we first started hearing about Twitter in 2007, it was like I, I, so many people came up to me at that South by and said, "That's the lamest thing I've ever seen," right? And sometimes those are the things that change the world. Yeah. yeah. The so subtlety of what it can do. I mean, look, Highlight sounds like it's a wonderful app for people trying to connect, um, and it does also bring the whole. I mean, but location-based services. I know, 10 years, 12 years ago. I was playing with LBS stuff, and it's nice to see finally it's happening because it's the consumers and the apps that are driving it. Because 10 years ago, 12 years ago, it was the carriers trying to push it to us top down. What we are seeing is a bottom up revolution. The fact that finally it's the consumers that are allowing the locations to be shared for the value of it. Could you imagine though if, if, if a carrier um, revealed your location? Yeah. How, you know, what that would do to privacy? But for you to opt in for it, that's cool. Yeah. And uh, as, as long as people understand what the impact and the meaning of that long term, um, it's very good. Cool. And the, the, I hope to have Paul. I've interviewed Paul, who wrote this, and I, um, Glancy is a competitor, and uh, there's Sonar and Banjo, and um, oh, there's so many competitors. Uh, and Kismet, and, uh, yeah, it goes on and on. There's a lot of people because we understand that this space is coming. 
Right. So it's an interesting space. I, I love the idea of an app that shows me things as I walk around the world. We're hearing rumors of Google doing glasses, right? These, these wearable glasses that'll show me things. We've seen Israeli companies do face detection, right? So yes. you aim your face phone at face.com. Yes. Face.com face. has an yeah. excellent uh, Right? And it's pretty it's accurate. Quick. It's yes. amazing. It's very And good. imagine you're wearing a glass and I look at the, that camera guy and I learn all about who he is and on you Facebook. And you actually remember, you know his name? And you actually remember the last time you met him? Yeah. You know, typically it's just mayors or you know, uh, uh, presidential figures have an entourage of the people. Shh, that's Robert Scoble, look over there. Yes, yeah, so say hello, you saw him two days ago. And it's like, you know, that's okay. But now it's, it, it's those technologies come to us. What I'm really interested in, the derivatives, what, once you can do that, what's next? Yeah. And, and sort of like, you don't know that until you do that, and then all of a sudden your perspective totally changes. Yeah. That's where the innovation in this space will come from. Not so many everyone climbing onto the same space, but how people become unique and how we innovate on top of these core I, technologies. As an investor, you know this space is coming. Something will happen. Yeah, actually, I've, I've fortunate I've got involved with um, with Sonar. I got involved with uh, uh, N Progress, which is Nitro. I did Fever, um, uh, Busy Boo. Uh, so you're a big believer in this space. I'm a very big believer in this space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what's your experience been at? Is this the social local um, high, uh, South Park? I, I don't think we're ready. We don't know yet. I mean, I've been looking at this space for almost six years, and if this is the coming out, awesome. But I think there are other things that privacy, the trouble is is that this, it's, privacy concerns are generational. Kids really don't care so much. The parents of kids at a certain age don't care so much. But the people in, in Washington or in other places where the, in, or, or the EU, they all of a sudden get very creeped out when, when certain privacy is being shared because for their generation, how dare you? And I think part of what we're going to see is a, is a fallback, a backlash from, from the regulatory folks trying to prevent some of the openness that we take for granted. And that's going to actually hamper and damper investor enthusiasm in some of these apps because fear, uncertainty, and doubt, not cool yeah. when you're dealing with uh, innovative technology. So, um, But that means there's opportunity, I think. Which I planted some seeds and I would plant some more. I, yeah. I think it's so, it's defining us as people. You know, we're, we're, we're 40 something years into the internet revolution, a world where now with 7 billion people, uh, we're now discovering mil hundreds of millions of them, if not billions. Yeah. So we're discovering, we have, a, we have an ability to learn a lot so much about each other, whether we're five feet away or, or 5,000 miles away. By the way, there's a difference in gender, how they react to this. I gave a talk at Stanford uh, to business school students, and a woman came up to me afterwards and said, I, I've been stalked, and this, these kinds of apps really freak me out. They're the creepy. Yes. They're creepy or freaky, they, because it's showing you to other people who are walking nearby, or in some cases, like Sonar, it shows you Everyone. details. 10 miles away, right? Yes. And the the interesting things will be who does who protects the sto the the stocky the most on these apps and who makes them feel comfortable. I think that's going to be a key thing for for these to go viral outside of this South by Southwest community. I totally agree. I and mean, yeah. we had an inter interesting experience regarding privacy. Uh, our first version uh, required location services enabled on the app so that uh, the app can access uh, local photos on the iPhone. And we got tons of emails from mad users saying, we don't want to enable location services, give us back our money. And we weren't aware of how people are afraid of just saying, yes, get my location. And we don't need the location, we just yeah. needed the photos. And the way iPhone is built, photos and location go together. Yeah. If you have access to the photos, you know where the guy was. So we had to rebuild something in a way that uh, will allow the app to access photos without getting the location uh, services, which so it, is, was kind asks, of hard. It asks you now if you want Yeah, location. it asks you, and if you say yes, the app works as usual. But if you'll say no, it'll still work in a, in a mode that is um, less convenient. Yeah. You need to choose one picture at a time, and it's a, it's a standard. Uh, uh, this is something that entrepreneurs really have to focus on now. Path got bashed uh, in the press because it was uploading my address book without yeah. really telling me, pushing that to the servers and storing it on the servers. Now, they weren't doing much with it. They were just ch comparing uh, which friends we had in common and stuff like that. Right. But this is a new world and we're still learning about these rules privacy. Of are, are engaging, are evolving and engaging at different levels. I, look, if you are going to upload, just, full disclo just disclose it. And if someone doesn't want to be part of it, let them opt out from it. I think it's, it's a, yeah. at the end of the day, it's expectation management. If we understand what we're doing and we're, and we're up about and we're aware of it, then it's fine. I mean, 
some the users don't know. The entrepreneurs don't even appreciate the impact of asking for certain things because they won't need it in their code. What the impact is going to be when they market the products? Yeah. What else are you seeing here? You know, are you well, seeing other iPhone apps or other uh, p real yeah, this things? Seems to be, I'm seeing a uh, one of the big breakout trends I'm seeing are apps that are enabling people to communicate in different ways, the subtleties. Yeah. And there's a large growth in that because we've never really had apps where communication uh, was ever part of it. And now it's become so commonplace that lots of people are trying to communicate or share or do things that are meaningful. I'm seeing people that are trying to re-engineer Facebook, which I find interesting. Yeah. Uh, people who feel that Facebook's too big. Yeah. So like there are startups that are doing just couples, just friends. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it's all subsets. Of course, they're using Facebook Connect to validate, but yet what they're building right. are, are, are these um, profiles and, the, and these. Well, the even hi testing. even highlight and glancy require Facebook to work, and if you're not on Facebook, you can't even use these apps. But so. yet, at the same time, we're trying to create we're narrow casting how we communicate yeah. and how we share because I think there is overload. There is a, a realization, and I mean, there are five, five, six different photo sharing apps where it's all private. Yeah, where like Path, like Path. Uh, yeah, actually similar to Path, but even more discreet. Uh, where photos are not necessarily being monitored, and where anything can be shared, it's in a meaningful way. There's also anonymousness needed. I mean, there's some people who are redefining privacy, and of course that scares me about people who want to abuse all this. Yeah. The first time we have issues with uh, really dark, bad things, some of this other stuff is going to stop. I mean, because it's it, it'll be legislated against us, which is why I concerned from the very beginning of being open about what we do, so therefore we cannot be accused of it. But in terms of the show floor here, I think it's amazing because you have people here from all over the world. You have pavilions with these really 35 startups from Israel here. Yeah. Pretty remarkable considering most of these guys have never been to Texas before. And, and you have a barbecue yet? <laughs> you have yes, barbecue yes, yesterday. We did. Yes, yes, we did. And We're going to Franklin's tomorrow, which is supposedly the best barbecue in Texas now. But wow. uh, we went, we're going to Lockhart tonight, so we're doing the barbecue tour too. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So when are you back in Tel Aviv? I don't know, I, I, I'm thinking about this spring, but it, it's gonna be tough. My schedule is just so nuts, and it's, it's hard to take that trip. You know, you have to come to San Francisco probably once in a while, right? And, uh, yeah. Traveling. Uh, 24 hour flight, it. right? Took us 30, 30 hours door to door. It was uh, kind yeah. of... Uh, and that's if the Israeli security doesn't stop you. <laughs> They're pretty tough, man. I remember yeah. that. I, I got stopped for 45 minutes being questioned. I, it was Why like are you a, leaving the country? Oh, yeah. It Why was are like, you leaving? Stay. It was like a, yeah, it was like a TechCrunch uh, interview, you know, uh, 300 <laughs> questions in 45 minutes. Um, what else is going on here? You know, that, that's interesting. I, you know, we were just in a really interesting panel about uh, events with all sorts of event planners from around the world. Well, I really have, I'm, I'm running a mini 140 conference today, actually, at the Hilton and Salon F&G yep. from 3.30 to 6 o'clock. I have some highlights from some, some of the past 140 conferences. Uh, you have people here, actually, it's like, uh, I'm, you know, well, the people come here with music trying to get discovered, looking for deals. Yep. There are startups here walking the show floor, hanging out. In fact, one of the bigger trends of South by this year is the unbadged crowd. Yeah. The folks that are not in this room right now, yep. that are on the streets, that are hanging out and making contacts, because they, they've hit critical mass. Yep. And, and there's a, almost a, a tipping spot where there will be more people coming who are not registered. This isn't a trend at events in general. But I I'm think noticing. Yossi Vardy sort of started that years ago. Yossi did. <laughs> but at the World Economic Forum, I met a whole group of people who don't have badges and were partying away. Oh, that was the, with the, you had the entire... Um, uh, Dab, you know, all, all, everyone who was protesting or not so protesting in Davos. Did you see, see the guys in the igloos? Yep. I mean, that was incredible stuff. I mean, I, I just saw photos. But the, the whole trend of sitting in the lobby of the, where the conference is rather than going inside the conference, but if it's all about the people, then you can be really smart about this. So there is yeah. this undertone of, of some people either protesting silently or they just can't justify it because they don't see the, either see the value or it's trendy. And yeah. I'd argue it's probably more trendy than anything else. Oh, I'm, I'm badged this year. And they're hanging out, and it's okay. We're cooler. Um, yeah. I don't know, but there is that trend. But around here today, tomorrow, there'll be some people whose lives will be changed yep. because someone has an idea for a startup. Someone's doing oh. something, and they're gonna run into somebody, and they can get funded. Well, we we were on the startup bus. There's ten startup buses that came from around the country. Ten startup buses and Mexico, and they. On the buses, there were three to four teams that created companies on the way here. And the company ideas were damn good. I followed that on Facebook. Yeah, you know, that's crazy. That's awesome. And it shows, by the way, how much uh, the industry has changed because you can create a company in three days. With cloud computing, you can start up a server in two minutes now. Well, and, you know, you have 
tools that let you get scale in a huge way. I think that's a huge undercurrent trend here. I, I think it's a, well, not only is it a huge trend here, it's also a huge level of disruption for the traditional venture capital community. Yeah. Because they used to be the gatekeepers. You know, in the 80s, if you didn't have $5 million in your startup, you didn't have it. And then, it, it were 50, I'm sorry, 80s, $15 million, then $5 million, then 500000 Now $50,000 actually gets it going. Because everything else is either free or very free. And the entire ecosystem of having an idea implementing it and finding customers it's really um, changed I mean everything has changed in that and the time frames have really got squashed down yeah absolutely. you're doing a show here tomorrow right tomorrow I am at one o'clock we're yeah. actually I think doing uh, interviewing a bunch of Israeli startups okay what kind of startups are you uh, are you hoping to expose on that show I'm hoping to expose a few um, well you're back I believe well maybe uh, we have some, music, so. some innovative music startups uh, guys playing in music uh, in video um, uh, and, and, and apps. It's um, yeah. It's a very eclectic. But that it's just fun. remind me of something. I, I met a developer off on the street who built an app that American Idol is using, and nobody's written about it. Really? That's an example you got of that. a startup that can get big without having any press, any story. And he has a really interesting story and a really interesting app that lets the are coaches. You gonna, are you going to write about it? Yeah, they're using American Idol's uh, musicians are using his app to coach each other and coach the singer that's awesome. for hey you're a little flat at this part you're gonna you're gonna mess up here that's very nice oh yeah wow. this is cool stuff you know and the ipad this was on the ipad what's the ipad 3 gonna mean for the uh, world well i think it's yet yeah, more people use it I, the biggest thing event, i think you're gonna see more people using tablets and, and that whole subtle uh, shifting that they predicted 20 years ago yeah. is now very much underway yeah. does that mean that it's gonna be incredibly disruptive to every other device out there i don't know but I think it will be because of text. The screen is stunning when you see text. Just the same way the iPhone 4 Four. was way better. If you showed me an iPhone 3, it looks it looks blurry. It looks blurry compared to this the new screen. And the same thing's going to happen on this new iPad. I'm, I'm going to be in line in New York uh, on Friday morning waiting for, to buy one. There, yep. there are so many accessories you can find now that turn your iPad into a laptop, yep. which uh, demonstrates that the, the laptops are going away and no need. And you just buy a $20 keyboard or $50. If I a 15-inch iPad, I, I would, uh, that would be nice. 15-inch? <laughs> um, what else uh, in, eight, in the final five minutes? Um, What's what's new on your iPhone? What 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 has anything changed about your iPhone in the last four months? Well, actually, there's a lot has changed because um, I had one of the first iPhones when it first came out, yeah. and then I went back to a BlackBerry mostly because I lost my iPhone. And I have a new startup which I'm not here to talk about, but I we were building both an Android and an iPhone app. So I figured that if I'm walking around with a BlackBerry while I'm pitching my startup, it's sort of like telling the world that I still use a Selectric typewriter and that one day maybe a WordStar will be my word processor. So I yeah. actually, I migrated in November 2011 back to an iPhone. I've been living through this metamorphosis of change. And I have certain apps which everyone takes for granted. I am enjoying a lot. I'm enjoying the ability to have, be able to share photos again. I'm enjoying, um, I mean, I, I'm, you know, words with friends. I was trying to figure out why would someone get thrown off a plane playing Scrabble. I understand why now. Yeah. I understand how My wife is totally addicted to words with friends. Uh, me too. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's like what I do in my downtime or when I just, you know, have the extra time. Yeah. And it's, um, so I'm, I'm playing with photo photography again. I'm, pl I'm playing with things which I'm passionate about. Yeah. And I, and I've, I love the new Smug Mug app, the camera awesome. It's by far the best uh, camera app out there. Is it? Yeah. It's called, it's called Camera Awesome. It competes with Camera Plus. Oh, I have Camera so, Plus. Oh, yeah, okay. Camera Awesome. It has more filters and uh, a few things that professional photographers, that high-end iPhoneographers I, need. I, 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 <laughs> well, you know, what I am seeing, though, it was actually nice in Tel Aviv. There was an Instagram um, gallery showing that all these very celebrities came, and they did gallery. It was like, it was like an art gallery, but it was everyone's Instagram photos. Yeah. And they were curated. And it was a very, it was just very nice to see some of these technologies go into you know, pop culture and then, and then be utilized. So for me, I'm playing with some very basic stuff. We're going through this change of actually what it's like to give up my Blackberry forever, which I did, yeah. and, 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 and relearn. One of the trends that uh, we're seeing in the world right now is big data. Uh, you know, the, very rise, big data. Of, very the big data. rise of the data scientist as a, important to build a company now. That Israeli company Waze, right, is studying my traffic I think as I walk, awesome. as I drive down the freeway, it's gra grabbing that and sharing it with other people. Well, um, a while they are, they are, they've helped create what I call the autonomous anonymous automobile. Yeah. But if you use Waze, it's W A Z E, uh, you're able, to, you're, you're spontaneously upgrading, uploading your speed, 
and you're also seeing the relative traffic of everyone else around you. Um, in Israel, is it true they actually built the maps? Um, it was yes. user generated. It was user, so the end users contribute to the map development, and then you can also set, you know, do all the notifications for for, for delays. For with the police or any other side. Police is one of the most popular oh, yeah. uh, usage. People are writing. There's a speeding uh, um, camera here. Watch it, and you just know where it's actually uh, very yep. good because you drive slower. And what no. I like about Waze, it starts to learn how we drive and understands our preferred routes and necessarily the optimized preferred routes. And it's a fairly amazing platform for that. No, I, I love that app and uh, that company. Um, what's happening in news? I mean, I, I, how we're getting our news is dramatically different than seven years ago. I mean, seven years ago, there wasn't Twitter. No. There wasn't really Facebook. There wasn't things like Flipboard, you know, or, or Feedly or... I think that the entire... Well, it, it, well, we know how we're getting our news today. The question is what makes news? Yeah. How is news bubbling up? And how are we actually going to figure out what's important? Yeah. And who are those filters? And who's going to actually be the journalist of record? Who's going to actually validate or verify certain things? And how, you know, the whole idea of what's relevant, what's real, and the ver verification of sources, that really doesn't go away. Yeah. You know, even if all the, the raw material comes directly to us, understanding what's where it is at is really hard. There, this is some new, a new trend that I'm seeing. There's uh, apps that let me see photos from a specific place, like teleported without the E, lets me do that in real time. So as people are shooting Instagram and Flickr and other photos, nice. it shows me streaming on the phone. I talked, I had uh, breakfast yesterday with the head of uh, online at Al Jazeera, and we talked about exactly this, how the world is changing news and how the world is changing because of that. Right. Egypt and Syria, We've yeah. had huge revolutions in the last 15 months that we almost take for granted today, right? We do. Absolutely. Egypt and Libya, it was, uh, the, the only news source was crowdsource uh, generated. Yeah. yeah, and he Twitter told me and, why. Because uh, his journalists get thrown in jail and get killed, so they're not willing to put journalists into Syria. At some so they points, I think that they declared iPhones as illegal. I'm not sure if it was in, uh, in, in which country, but they declared I if you were walking the street with an iPhone, really, you're in trouble. I Incredible. think it was in Syria. That's but why I'm I live in sure. the United States. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so far, uh, we, okay. we are free and we can uh, walk around with our iPhones proudly. <laughs> so. Absolutely, wow, that's great. <laughs> but that's, you know, I, I talked with a, a government official at the World Economic Forum. People are being killed because of Facebook. The, you know, in Syria, and, and the journalist yesterday told me this too, in, in Syria, they're going to kidnap some, somebody who's a protester, hold a gun to his head, say, give me your Facebook profile and password, and then they'll interrogate all of his friends on that Facebook page. That's already happening. In, this stuff is real and has that's, consequences, that's right? Scary. In Iran, a few weeks ago, they blocked all the HTTPS traffic so that I Iranians, uh, us uh, internet users, will not be able to go through secure proxies and will have to use clear uh, communication. And this way, they found out uh, all, the, all, the, uh, all the Facebook users that are talking against the government because they couldn't go uh, through HTTPS. It was, uh, it's amazing the, the need and the, the, the problems. Yeah, well, thank you so much for joining me. I think we're out of time here. Um, and thanks to New Tech for giving us this great studio you, with the, the New Tech TriCaster. Uh, Leo Laporte uses one. And, I have, uh, I've had one for a long time. We've, we it. use it on the Gilmore Gang every Friday afternoon. So uh, we love we love this company and we love their products. So thanks for uh, joining Thank me. Thank you very much. Thank and, you. Uh, and thanks everybody worldwide for watching. Thank you. Thank you.